Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. The question of the day is, I want you to tell me the name of an altcoin that you will never, ever, ever buy. Everyone has a coin that they see is quite popular and they know that they themselves will never buy it. So I want to know exactly which one that is. And without any further ado, uh, let's jump right into it. We are going to have a very, 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 very weird news day trying to warn you in advance. Um, I thought this was a joke and it actually ended up being quite popular. I guess which just shows a relative disconnect that I might have to the to the world around me. Uh, but this one actually made uh, a, a significant amount of, of, of headlines. Cardano's co-founder, his name is Charles Hoskinson, recently discussed the network's trajectory, likening it to becoming the Taylor Swift of blockchain. Like I said, maybe I'm just not into pop culture as much and therefore I don't really understand the reference. In a recent interview, Charles Hoskinson, co-founder of Cardano, shared insights into the network's reputation and challenges in the crypto space. He highlighted its innovative approaches as a liquid staking, okay, and its growth without venture capital funding. Factors that have garnered attention, according to Hoskinson. These factors have made others in the industry fear Cardano's success. There's so much that I want to say, and I have a feeling at some point I won't be able to stop myself from actually saying it. Despite its advancements, the network faces challenges, notably the absence of stable coins on their platform. Hoskinson suggested that the lack of engagement from stablecoin projects may stem from a perceived lack of desire to integrate with Cardano's ecosystem. Okay, so uh, there's a book. Oh gosh, what is it called? I think, I think it's called The Kryptonians. I believe it's called The Kryptonians. I think it's made, I'm pretty sure it's made by Laura Shin. L-A-U-R-A-S-H-I-N. Uh, she's quite popular. I think she has her own podcast as well, or did a number of years ago. Not really. I haven't listened in like five or six years. The point is, there's a book called The Kryptonians. I'm certain that that's what it is. And in the book, she basically interviews every single person who had to deal with or was in the first one, two, three something or so years of the Ethereum project. Like basically everyone. And at some point, uh, she says that people from within this group, and also it is believed to be Hoskinson himself, uh, she had interviews with all these people and gathered all the information, and then she made a book about the earliest moments of Ethereum. And as I've mentioned before, and I think this was more of a 2018, 2019 kind of thing, a lot of people inside crypto and i'm sure even less know now a lot of people within the cryptocurrency space didn't know that all these people knew each other for some reason people assumed once again which is typically the story people assume these people come out of the woods like literally walk out of the woods create these protocols and become millionaires not realizing that these people already had money beforehand like none of these people were poor working in mcdonald's and then they were like cardano i got it no, they all knew each other. They used to work for Yahoo when Yahoo was a really big thing and or Google and or other major companies. And usually the story goes in the very beginning, a lot of these people were developers and or worked on uh, the Bitcoin protocol or the, you know, the, the framework of everything that was happening. Not the Satoshi people, but the people a couple of years after who got really interested in it, who were buying Bitcoin for one, two, three, four dollars, had a whole bunch of it and then ended up working on other projects. So a lot of people who worked on Bitcoin actually ended up leaving because they said that they wanted to do something similar, different, better, quicker, whatever. And these people ended up making Litecoin. 
there was another branch of people who actually uh, went on to go make Ethereum. And from that Ethereum tree, uh, the story goes that Vitalik was actually going to work for Ripple, but he couldn't get a visa, which is really crazy because we'd live in a whole different world right now. Vitalik was trying to work for Ripple because he liked what they were doing. He couldn't get a visa. And then he ended up just making his own coin called Ethereum, onto which I think it was developed mainly in Switzerland. And I think there were 10 to 15 people who worked on the project together in its early, early, early days. And Hoskinson was one of them. Now, allegedly, it goes that within this book and also other accounts of things that you can find yourself online, apparently a lot of people allegedly did not like Hoskinson simply because they said allegedly that he was a fibber. He was always elaborating and making uh, stories and telling people things that they say didn't actually exist. So people began to kind of push themselves away from them, him. And you can even see this in a number of other cryptocurrency projects. Once again, all these people know each other in some form or fashion. But at some point, we hear rumors that this person did this or this person did that or allegedly X, Y, and Z. And this is why you have a lot of cryptocurrency projects that have not been shunned, but you don't hear a lot of like buddy-buddy stuff comparative to other projects who are working together, who are building other layers and all these other types of things as well. So it's been assumed that since all of that allegedly took place, 10 or so years ago, as Ethereum was being developed, that a lot of the lack of interest for Cardano might be because that people, now once again, this is, this is something that a book said, might be because that people don't actually like Charles Hoskinson. You've noticed before, or you might have noticed before, a lot of times Charles Hoskinson tends to be in the cryptocurrency news, not because he saved a kitten from a tree because he's like arguing with someone on Twitter or on YouTube and he's like screaming at them and saying all these kinds of like interesting kinds of things. So even the the advent of putting other like stable coins onto other chains has to do with like wink the idea of decentralization and showing people like how far spread that your stable coin actually is or these other projects and that's what i was saying before and i know that a lot of people get really upset is because you're new to the you're you're new to the cryptocurrency space and you don't understand what a lot of these coins are actually for or like what they mean or what they're trying to do or what they're not trying to do if you got into this if you if you are in the cryptocurrency space and you get annoyed when someone says something negative about a coin that you hold, this is probably not the market for you. It's like you holding Apple stock or Coca-Cola stock or some other Tesla stock and someone saying something, you're like, I don't like what you said, and you get really annoyed and kind of walk away. That's not the the, the mind frame, especially if you believe in it, then you believe in it. But I, I tell you things that I've read or have transpired in the news, and this is why I was saying before I think during this bull run, Cardano will do just fine. We're, we're in, we will be in like a hyper hypey mode where nearly, nearly all coins will succeed. But I don't think Cardano has that many more uh, cycles left within it simply because of all the stuff that's been happening the last couple of years. Yeah, just thought I'd throw that part out there because a lot of people find coins usually what ends up happening is everyone finds out about the cryptocurrency space because of bitcoin they look at bitcoin's price and they deem that bitcoin is actually too expensive for them they don't want the the idea of only owning fragments of bitcoin because it's not as popular or cool or classy to say well i own 0.01342765 of a bitcoin so they end up looking for other options and they end up usually sometimes in other corners of the cryptocurrency space where people tell them hey you you should buy this coin it's great value for the money and it's going to do a 200x so they buy these coins with the expectation not of explicitly profit but more so they think that it'll outperform bitcoin and they've been told by someone else that it's going to and over the course of a couple of years when their coins price doesn't reach where they heard that it was going to go instead of not looking elsewhere, but kind of like mm, doing more research, people kind of double and triple down on the coins that they're already holding and ex just expecting that the coin's going to do even better the next time. Something very similar is like with Dogecoin. 
Dogecoin has been in the news a lot the last couple of weeks, and it's mainly been because the coin isn't performing as well as people were expecting it to as Bitcoin has been moving up. The expectation since last year was that Elon Musk was going to announce something for Twitter payments that would revolutionize everything and therefore bring Dogecoin's price up to 70, 80, 90 cents before we actually get into any kind of a bull run. And now that that's not happening, a lot of people are very annoyed. I'm seeing the exact same thing on Twitter. But, but uh, once again, a lot of these people don't understand security laws, what the lawsuit actually is against Ripple or anything from the SEC or how prices are supposed to move relatively organically. There are a lot of people on Twitter right now who are telling Ripple the same as they were telling Charles Hoskinson a couple of weeks ago to advertise more. And that's not, you can't, you can't do that. That's not, that would like negate the entirety of XRP not being a security. If you get the company who has just been deemed to not have an effect on the coins price, actually trying to have an effect on the coins price. So a lot of people get into the space and they assume once again, that a lot of these things are like stocks and they're not. They're, they're literally meant to be modes of payment for 8 billion people on the planet. And it's more of a, it's actually your business. It's, it's up to you to be able to spread the word about your coin. The point is, is that whoever created it doesn't have control over it. That is the basis of decentralization. It's now up for you and your friends to run nodes and to run validators to secure the network get and convince other people to do the exact same thing and you become the advertisement for it. You tell other people explicitly why this coin is better than that coin and give them actual proof. Don't just say because I know that it's going to do a 900x. That's what people aren't getting and everyone gets into this space expecting amazing, crazy things to happen and then they don't. And then it's like, well, because you're not paying attention to the news that's actually out there. That's why a lot of times I always tell people, especially if you're brand new here, Read about your coins. Don't just jump into it because you heard somebody say that Solana is going to 900x because this new phone that came out that has a meme coin on top of it. Read about how it broke down 14 times, how the venture capital companies are also aren't feeling it that much anymore. Like it's, it's all these little things that like the, the, the news is there. You can like read about it. You can go find it yourself for free. You can like update yourself on the coins that you hold. But a lot of people don't want that. You want to simply just be told by other YouTubers that this coin that you're holding is absolutely fantastically amazing and is going to do amazing things. This is why a lot of times I tell you, like, the news that comes out is the news that I give you. It's not simply me being like, well, this is, well, let's only talk about Bitcoin. No, Bitcoin is like 90% of the news. And then you have like a sliver of Ethereum. You have a lot of XRP stuff. Every other week, you'll have something about Cardano and then the other coins end up falling where they actually end up falling. Like the news is about Bitcoin because it's Bitcoin, because it's the number one coin and it has been the number one coin for the last 15 years. It's not simply because everyone is like, well, maybe we should. No, no, no. Like they're only talking about Bitcoin because Bitcoin is Bitcoin. There's a reason why we're talking about Bitcoin ETFs and Bitcoin derivatives and why all these companies are only collecting and absorbing tons of Bitcoin. If they were doing it to other coins, you'd also hear about the exact same thing as well. When you hear about these other projects and these other coins who have things going on, like it ends up being in the news on this channel. You hear about that Litecoin had an update and upgrade. You hear about Ethereum. You hear about that XRP is, is voting on a new thing for their system. You, you hear about this coin happening, but a lot of times I tell you, like when Cardano is in the news, it is usually because Charles Hoskinson said something, not because the coin has anything new on top of it or, or doing anything better or has like some kind of a new thing that it didn't have before. And when they do talk about that, they're going to be upgrading something. It, it always has like a ridiculous time frame. Like I told you before, most coins, what they tend to do now is like they're no longer as hypey as they were before. So you will hear that a coin is going to have some kind of an upgrade similar to Ethereum. And they go, okay, it's December. We're going to start working on the upgrade. We're going to have a whole bunch of test nets. And then the test nets are going to go live in January and February. And then in March, we're going to have the actual upgrade. Bam, cool, shebang, awesome. However, for Cardano, it ends up being last June 2023, we hear that there's going to be an upgrade or an update. And then they go, okay, well, we have this test net in July. We have this one in August. We have this one in October. We have this one in November. And then we have another one in December. But wait for it. In January, there's another test net and it might go all the way up until March and then we're working on the purple test and it's like what are you talking about what what why is it taking so long for you to do so many different things and then this also ties into the idea of like partnerships and stuff like that like pay attention to partnerships like it has nothing to do this is the same exact thing that happened a, a number of years ago when it came to Tron and it was so annoying because so many people were so fixated by this idea of Tron from this person who allegedly 
lie to a lot of people. For those of you who don't know the the story, uh, it was uh, Justin Sun at some point said that he knew like all these like famous Jap- uh, uh, Chinese uh, billionaires and millionaires who lived inside of China and how amazing they were, how he was hanging out with them all the time. And then people found out that all he did was go to the university of one of them. So like imagine like Elon Musk making like Elon Yu. And then you go to Elon Yu and you tell people that you know Elon Musk. That's basically what he was doing. And the people found out that he didn't know any of these people. He shook their hand one time as somebody else handed them him a diploma. And then at some point he was talking about all these partnerships that Tron was going to have. And then Tron didn't have any of these partnerships. Tron had none of them. The, 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 the most famous one that really I was like, okay, I'm, I, this, like, this coin is completely done. Where he, he announced that Tron was going to have a partnership with Amazon. And of course the price went off because everyone was like, oh my gosh, Tron's amazing. You got a partnership with Amazon? No, they were using, Tron was using Amazon Web Services. That was literally what it was. Like they, 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 they even posted this. It was so weird on Twitter. They posted what the partnership was, and it was literally like, "Look how much we're paying per month for Amazon Web Services." And it's like, "What are you talking about? Like, do you understand what a partnership even is?" That also doesn't even factor into people found that you can look this up. You can look this up everywhere. When Tron, you know how like Bitcoin has like a white paper and Ethereum has a white paper. It's basically like a you know set of papers that basically show what the idea for the coin is, what it's going to do, what it's meant to do, how it's meant to function, their idea for decentralization, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. For Tron, people found out that they had copied and pasted other white papers for cryptocurrency coins that already existed and threw them into one um, Excel sheet. Look it up. People literally found, and I mean, it's not even like they took sentences. They were taking six paragraphs at a time from other coins. Look it up. That was that's what made it so clear. So many so many times these coins come out. I'm like, what, what, what this coin is garbage, and everyone completely loses their mind. It's not garbage. It's, it's the next amazing thing. And I'm like, you can see that these people are lying. You can see that this person literally copied and pasted from other cryptocurrency projects and threw it into a white paper. And then finally, other people were like, something's not right here. Something's not working. Same exact thing with IOTA a number of years ago, where people were like, the tangle doesn't work, and people were still talking about how IOTA was going to take over XRP. Same exact thing with Stellar Lumens and I was like Stellar Lumens is absolute garbage. The team stood on a this team stood on a stage and told the world that they were burning half of the coin supply to try and make the coin's price rise cuz no one was using it. Can you imagine? Can you absolutely imagine like how that even destroys the entire realm of the idea of decentralization that you had that many coins and you decided to burn that many coins at once cuz no one's using your product or your protocol? It's crazy. This like really weird uh, tribalism that exists in so many parts of the cryptocurrency space where you have to try and convince yourself that the garbage that you bought before that I told you not to buy before, not to look at, ends up being actual garbage. In the in the in the in the in the in the idea of Cardano, the interesting part is that this coin actually works. That's usually one of the issues. Is that like it actually works, it actually functions, it actually does what it says it is going to do. However, like no one is really using it. It's because I told you before, we don't need 10,000 different coins. We maybe need 15 to 20, maybe 30 on a really good month. Maybe. And then couple that with all the news that's been coming out allegedly over the course of the last two years as to how Hoskinson might be. Once again, I'm not the only person who read that book. Go find it. Go read it. Go to your public library. Read it online. You'll find it somewhere. And this is what it actually ends up turning into. We've seen this from a lot of different cryptocurrency projects before where they just don't get a lot of attention or get a lot of stuff built on top of it. That's why I told you before, when you pay attention to all the stuff that's being built on top of Ethereum, it's being built there for a reason. Behind the scenes, these people know each other and they're relatively nice to each other. That's how you get the partnerships. That's how you get JP Morgan to build on top of Ethereum and all these other things that have also been going on. It's just a really, it's, it's, it's insanely simple. It's insanely simple. Like it's not, it's not science at all. It's just about relationships, how much money is actually flowing in the background through all these people. So it's not that once again, Cardano works. That's the problem. But if it does work and no one wants to build on top of it, it's a red flag. Complete red flag. That's why I told you. One or two more cycles left. Just being completely honest with everyone out there. Don't assume. And also, first of all, don't assume that you're going to be holding on to these coins forever. That doesn't make any sense. 
you don't no you you would these are all everything even bitcoin these are all experiments you are you are not i hope that you are not buying cardano tron solana dogecoin bonk shiba inu and all these other coins assuming that you're going to pass them down to your grandkids they're not even being used now why would that make any why would that here yeah i'm i'm 97 years old here's my bonk please take my coin you are now generationally wealthy what are you talking about and it's it's like it's clearly in the news all the time as well the thing that that really got me the thing that really got me was the comparison to Taylor Swift. Cause I was like, what? What are you talking about? What 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 world or planet are you living on that you're telling a whole bunch of investors or you know, one what have you, that these words were spoken. We haven't done well before, but I think we're gonna be the Taylor Swift. The Taylor who? You're doing what to this blockchain? What exactly is that is that supposed to make me like Am I supposed to be like, oh my gosh, we're going to be the Taylor Swift of blockchain? Guys, get ready. I can't wait to see where this... What? Am, am I living in a different dimension where that's supposed to be something that's like celebrated and people are jumping up and down for? It doesn't make any sense. I completely don't understand where that even came from or how this ended up being... This ended up being super popular news. This ended up being super popular news because he said the words Taylor Swift and that's going to be us in the future. Is there a problem with people looking at the actual facts of things that are happening around them? No, scratch that. I know that that is because I see how the world functions and I've been paying attention even more since around 2014, 2015. I've been paying really close attention that people don't actually care about facts at all. It's simply like the perception of others. You assume that others are perceiving the exact same thing as you, so you you just go completely headfirst into, into that thing that you think that other people are also paying attention to as well. Hoskinson expressed concerns about the prevalence of asset-backed stable coins in the crypto industry. This is another weird topic that for some reason isn't also a topic. A number of years ago, for those of you who don't know, and Hoskinson should know this, he's been in this space since like the very beginning, is that a lot of people have been creating stable coins. Wow, crazy, right? Insane. The problem was is that in the very beginning, a lot of people were creating... Um, they weren't asset backed, they were algorithmically backed. And the problem with that is, is that they kept on failing over and over and over and over because no one was creating an algorithm that was, once again, I don't create algorithms, I am not an algorithmiker, so I can't you know, say that it's easy in any sort of way, but it's more so that uh, no one was creating an algorithm that wasn't capable of decoupling the coin's price. So you, you create these things, you have these venture capital companies who like jump behind it and they simply go, okay, we'll throw tons of money in your direction, make it with an algorithm. Someone makes it, it lasts for about a good three, four, five, six, seven months, the whole thing collapses. Problem, red flag, not working. It happened over and over and over. Around 2018, somewhere around there, for some reason, people began to make gold-backed stable coins as you might have guessed, those also didn't do so well as well because the companies allegedly were telling everyone that they were going to be backed by gold, which was meant to like basically get a whole bunch of boomers to be like, that's the coin that I want, not realizing that these companies would have had to acquire billions of dollars worth of gold when they barely had $25 million worth of funding. So the only stable coins that have thus far, unless someone figures out a brand new algorithm or figures out a brand new way to make all of this actually work, is to actually have them backed by assets. This is also the problem that we had a couple of years ago when it came to Facebook coin. Facebook coin said that they were going to be backing it with, I think, a bunch of other, like, air quote, foreign currencies, and the U.S. didn't like it because they wanted everything to be backed simply by U.S. dollars. When Tether was starting out with their stable coin, they said that it was backed by U.S. dollars and a bunch of other assets. Of course, the U.S. dollar had a really big problem with that, and this is why you saw and still see so much hate against Tether, because for some reason, you know, the almighty dollar has to constantly be the main focus of the entire world. And this is why recently we had news, this was about a month ago, maybe two months ago, that Tether now has, I think, daily, um, what do you call it? Oh gosh, what's the word? 
uh, where where someone checks it every single day. Like someone is checking to see that their assets are actually there every single day just to appease the general public because people wouldn't stop lying about them because other companies were so desperately trying to make their own stable coins as well, just hoping that Tether would fall and fail. That's why the other ones collapsed as well over the course of the last two years. You've seen all of them completely collapse is because they were done by algorithms and or did not have a proportionate amount of US-based assets and I personally believe these things were destroyed on purpose to simply try and get them out of the way, as we've seen many other times before. You can even look. There's a whole bunch of articles from the last couple of years that, that keep saying over and over and over that uh, Tether has de-pegged. Is this the end of Tether? They're written by other companies who are working with other companies who are trying to make people uh, get rid of Tether and not want to use Tether. And like the de-pegs end up being that Tether goes to a dollar and one cents or to 99 cents. The world is absolutely ridiculous, but I told you all before, this is why we see the accumulation of Bitcoin completely going to like astronomical levels because these people are literally only here for the money. The idea of, of actual decentralization and helping billions of people in the world, are you, are you insane? I need to make myself richer. The hell with everybody else. This is why the cryptocurrency space needs like a lot of help a lot of actual help and we need like real people to actually be in the market as opposed to hearing that Fidelity and BlackRock alone own 200,000 Bitcoin. It's completely insane. So when it comes to the actual idea of asset backed stable coins, it's one of the few things that we have that actually air quotes works right now. And Hoskinson says he has a problem with them. And I assume he has a problem with them because no one's actually putting them on top of Cardano. Because I can assure you, I can assure you, I can 1 9 million percent assure you, if Tether, USDC, and the Gemini coin were on top of Cardano, do you think he would have a problem with asset backed stable coins? Absolutely not. He highlighted their highly centralized nature, which grants control to a few entities such as centralized exchanges and ETFs. From the very beginning, we've known that stablecoins are centralized. That was never something that was meant to be hidden. The reason why people think that they're decentralized is because they tend to sometimes be on decentralized blockchains. These things are created by one company. They're not created by the community. We don't vote on things for stable coins. It's done by Tether. Tether is the company that creates Tether. Is Was anyone unaware of that? Stable coins, like we, we've heard before. This was a couple of months ago as well. Remember when everyone completely lost their minds for no freaking reason? We had news that um, Tether had blocked a bunch of um, addresses that were holding Tether. And people were like, you can't do that. It's undecentralized. And I had to make a whole video where I was like, you know that they're a company, right? Like they work with government agencies and the FBI. And if the FBI sees, because once again, they have all this information for those of you who were also completely unaware. You thought that your transactions online were, were not being noticed by governments. They know all these, they, they, they see where the money's moving to. And that's why every time you link your account to MetaMask and to Visa and to PayPal, they have all of your transactions and all of your records. So when people do things that governments don't want, and then the government goes directly to Tether and says, hey, we see an address that has 2 million Tether. We need you to freeze it because it, we, we think it's part of ABC XYZ and it gets frozen. People go on to social media and go, what, that, what, 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 what that's, that's completely wrong. They're a company who works with law enforcement. They made Tether a stable coin to enrich in themselves. This is why when we hear that Tether makes billions of dollars worth of profits, that's why you don't see that sprinkling into your Tether accounts or into your cryptocurrency accounts. Like They're not you know, throwing it back to the public. It's, it's theirs. That's why when you put money onto a cryptocurrency exchange and sometimes the account gets frozen, it's because they're, 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 they're like a, a bank. They're the new forms of banks. That's why decentralization is actually so uh, important so that you can have control over your money, but then you relinquish all the, all the control once again back to the same exact people who are reworking with the banks to make sure that this cycle just continues over and over and over and we wind up exactly back where we were in the next 10 to 15 years in a decentralized, centralized world where all the rich people are holding all the Bitcoin, 
especially can you imagine can you imagine if we actually do end up getting to a one to one parity with the US dollar per satoshi how much money these people are going to have do you understand what it means to have 15,000 bitcoin and then one satoshi equals 1 US dollar can you imagine having 200,000 bitcoin as a company microstrategy can and then we end up back in the same exact situation where a lot of your friends are going to be bragging to you one day that they have 45,000 sats. And you're going to be like, wow, that's, that's really cool. And you're going to hear that other people have a million Satoshis and how they're living their best life. And then you'll look up down the street. It's a gigantic castle, like thunderbolts and stuff you know, above it. That person has 300,000 Bitcoin. Wow. Wow. What a, what a life to be a time. He highlighted their highly centralized nature, which grants control to a few entities such as centralized exchanges and ETFs. Hoskinson emphasized that while these stablecoins facilitate a significant point of transactions on chain, their centralized control poses a risk to the decentralized nature of cryptocurrencies, right? -o. He underscored the need for the crypto industry to address these concerns to ensure its long-term viability and decentralization. No one's going to do that. Mr. Hoskinson, come on, you know... You know good and well not one single person is going to do that. This this article actually goes on for for a while, like not like a little bit, for like like a while, while like it kind of just c continues over and over and over, uh, basically talking about uh, what he doesn't like and how they're going to look like Taylor Swift at some point. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to be doing it. Um, was not expecting a rant video. Was not expecting a rant video. Zero percent. Um, this is a very weird market. This is a very, very weird market. And I'm going to need everyone on deck, like going forward, like completely, like this isn't even a joke because the market's going to get completely insane. And I know that I'm going to like lose a lot of people mentally who are going to start buying these other crappy, crazy coins with expectation because I've been seeing the articles already popping up. I've been seeing the articles popping up about, uh, wait, what was it? There's... An article that said, forget Solana, this new meme coin that's built on top of a meme coin on top of Solana just did 80,000% up in one day. And I'm like, they're actively trying to scam you. They're trying to make sure that you lose all of your money within this space and don't pay attention to the actual big things that are happening. The problem with the bull run is going to be that every coin looks like a winner. So we're also going to be having many conversations as to like how to stay leveled and, and the need for you to all have like an actual like number in your head that you're satisfied with. If you just said a million, well, you know, see you in 2033. But everyone needs to have a number that they feel comfortable with. Don't forget that you're here to not only make money, but not to sit on these coins thinking that they're going to go up forever. That is foolish and it is not going to actually take place. In the actual context of everything Cardano, I don't know if I mentioned it in this video, but I have before, I own ADA. I got ADA a long time ago. I'm still holding on to my ADA, but I'm not sitting here under the delusion that this coin at some point is going to go to $397 per coin. It's just not going to happen unless we end up getting news about 15 companies that are not paid by Cardano are also building on top of the protocol as well. It's a lot. It's a lot constantly going on. And I would have liked to have seen Cardano actually succeed. But the last couple of years have like shown me like there are so many other coins that are going to do exceptionally better once again, unless we start hearing of a lot of building on the coin during this bull run and this bull season. But after that, once again, the price predictions of around seven to twelve dollars this run seem relatively uh relatively realistic. But um yeah, Taylor Swift. Rightio. Uh was not expecting to rant. I do sincerely hope that you've all enjoyed in some sort of way. I like 
I literally black out and just start like talking into the into the microphone and then completely lose myself because there's so much stuff happening. Like there's so much nonsense always taking place within this space. And I, I sit here a lot of times and I read it and I see the stuff that people are talking about. And I'm like, you know, excuse my French. I'm like, you know, that's a load of BS. Like it is completely illogical. So many things that are happening, but so many people get a coin, hold on to it. And it becomes the, the the dream of their future. Like nothing else exists. And I'm like, just pay attention to the news. Is it being used? Who is it being used by? Not its market cap. Not not the amount of people who are, you know, trading it on a daily basis. Like what is the coin doing? Who's using it? What's the future basis for this coin? I can create a coin and be like, well, in the future, I'm, I'm expecting it to be like Beyonce because, you know, she sings and she dances around on stage. What? What are you talking about? No, actual growth, actual usage. I want to see people using this thing. Like, like I want to see companies talking about that they're going to be using it because they don't, while, they, while the company might not care for decentralization, they see that this one project is actually something that they can actually work with. Anyway, hope you've all enjoyed Hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.